Good morning, everybody. Today is rear sway bar day. Um, I'm still waiting on the uh, front rotors to come in for the truck. So until that happens, I figured I'd just put the old hubs and everything back onto the truck, the front wheels back on, do the let it down and then jack up the rear and put the rear sway bar on while we're waiting for those front rotors. Um, it's not the most ideal situation. I wish I had everything here. The rotors are the front rotors. The, they're drilled and slotted and they're coming from Canada. So I'm kind of at the mercy of, of that. I could have went with regular ones, but I really wanted the drilled and slotted. Um, I think that's real important for heat dissipation. And uh, so yeah, we're gonna be putting this in today. So let's get started. Well folks, the moment we've all been waiting for. Now we have the uh, truck jacked up and the sway bar right here and ready to put it up. I quickly realized something that I should do before I put the sway bar on. Since we dropped the truck three inches with these um, different leaf springs here, why is my camera out of Um. The load sensing valve is pulled all the way over um, as if I have a heavy, heavy load on it right now. And what I need to do is sit it back on the ground, pick it up off the bumper, raise the, raise the truck up three inches, leaving the tires on the ground, and then take a center to center measurement here and figure out what that is and then make a bracket to go on here to move this that way or this way, whichever whichever way is required when it's now in this position. Cause I mean, it's jacked up with all the weight on the axles. So this would be like right height. And I need to make the normal height and this height the exact same because I would think that in its mind, like I said, that it thinks that it has a heavy load on it right now because it's three inches, actually it's three inches up more towards the truck, um, which is gonna throw my braking off for the rear. It's not gonna act like normal. So we need to address that first. So this is probably gonna be a long video. Hopefully not, please stay tuned. Okay, so we started out with uh, 30 inches to here, uh, factory. And after the drop springs, it's 27 and a half inches on the nose, even after my big run is up here. Okay, so basically after a little bit of measuring, putting the truck at the stock ride height, um, the center to center distance for the load proportioning valve is six and a half inches. Keep in mind that my truck still has the factory bushing that goes around the, the load sensing valve um, spring. So it actually increases spring tension because I've seen a lot of videos where they show the load uh, proportioning valve um, and it's just clipped around the metal end. Well, there's actually a like plastic slash rubber uh, grommet that goes around there that increases the size. It's the same size of the in part of the inner part of the spring. So if you look at your load proportioning valve and it's just clamped around a little thin piece of metal, it's not supposed to be like that. That's not how it came from the factory. There's actually a, like a grommet that goes around there that fits on the inside of, of the, the spring that pulls that over. So six and a half inches 
factory. Um, I'm setting it seven and three quarter inches. So it's actually pulling it harder. Again, thinking that it's got a load on when it really doesn't. So um, I'm gonna write that down. And because I don't really need to address it right now because I'm trying to get this freaking sway bar in. But I'm gonna have to move I'm gonna have to take the tension off the spring. So I'm gonna have to move those points closer together. So basically the part that mounts on the, the rear differential is gonna have to move closer uh, to the uh, load proportioning valve. So let's try and get this darn thing in here. Cause I've honestly off camera, I've tried like three times to get this stinking sway bar in here, but with like um, some brake line hoses, some all this other flexible hoses, the load proportion valve spring, um, the muffler on the other side. I cannot get this thing to go in here, um, but I'm going to try and manipulate some stuff off camera, take some stuff off, put some stuff back on. Bing, bang, boom, hopefully it works. In like one second, hopefully I'm under the truck. So I just wanna show you this. I'm trying to clean out more room underneath of the of the truck to uh, be able to do this whole job here. Uh, in doing so, I had to remove the spare tire. And how awesome is that? Like a 30 year old tire, it's, it's weather check. show you this. It's like... <clears throat> like look at that. That. So the things I'm fighting is trying to get around this. Get around these two. I gotta get around these two hoses. Through here, over there. And I keep hitting this thing. Uh, so. Okay, we'll keep working at it. Let's go. gonna come back and cold clock me in the face. Oh, it's just got super loose. If I was a time machine, I could go back and reconstruct this for you, but basically it looks like this. And it goes around here like so. But there is, this is only like 30% of it. So it looks like I'm gonna be joining the crowd. Look at this side. See the, see the um, plastic slash rubber grommet? That's what it's supposed to look like. Also, I'd like to put up, point out that the, uh, what would it be? The upper one is slotted for adjustment. So that's convenient, but I don't think it's gonna be enough slotted for us. Okay, so that stupid thing's out of the way. Let's see if this goes in any easier.
name of the game is don't hurt yourself. Because there's a lot of crap on here and you don't want to go to the dentist. This here. Oh my god, California you can suck. There's this stupid thing right here. Like, can you see it? Right here? Which way is my damn camera face? This thing, right here. You suck. Uh, normal D21s don't have this. But I'm gonna go with a wild assumption that freaking California made this happen. Ooh. And you don't think it's factory? It says Nissan right on it! Uh, it could be a collector's piece probably. Hey, you wanna buy this for 10 grand? Just that little piece. Hit me up. So let's see. I am got to be doing this like completely wrong here. Like, okay, round two. Here's what I'm thinking. All right. Here's what I'm thinking. We have it jacked up and on jack stands for my fat butt so that I can get under here and actually work. Uh, maybe we pick up on the rear bumper to increase clearance. Well, guess what? It worked. Now, I don't know if you can see it or not. Oh, can I take this one down? What's up here? Okay, so I got the driver's side, driver's side and passenger side um, put on and snug down just a little bit. Now I have to do this part right here. And probably just from an engineering standpoint, the most important thing is, is to have have this mounted, have this mounted the exact same distance on both sides. Because if you don't, you're gonna get uneven leverage, uneven torque across the solid differential here. So here's my predicament. I took the, the sensor thing off. Normally, if the truck bed was off, I would just use my cutoff wheel and cut cut a notch up in here. Um, to do it that way, I'm gonna try something semi-dumb. But what I was going to do was to uh, take the punch, put a punch right here, and then drill like a half inch hole. And then from tangent on the holes, to the back side, cut a notch in it. So basically, I need to make clearance for this. It's three eighths of an inch. So if I had a half inch hole, or a 9 16 hole, um, and then cut it back, that would give me more than enough clearance to, to put this in and get my rotational angle that I need. So basically I'm almost done. I drilled the hole out to whatever size this thing is. A bit of a lower logistical problem. Pretty damn big size hole, uh, 9 sixteenths. I was gonna use the cutoff wheel to cut the thing out and then I was thinking maybe I'll go over to Take these off, that's a lot quieter. Um, maybe go over to my buddy's house and he has a really small, or buddy's shop, I should say, not his house. Really small cutoff wheel. Um, but once I got the hole done, I just used the die grinders 
and uh, took it out. And I'll show you that here in a second. But <clears throat> to get all the burrs off, I'm gonna use my half inch belt sander, electric belt sander. This thing is freaking awesome. What is this, Makita. So, um, the U-bolt goes through just fine, but the bracket has to go through. And so basically we have to just, we have to grind out more of, of the um, bracket. So basically we've just got to grind out the whole inside of it. Um, so from the back end of the hole over to the edge so that the bracket can just fit up in there. In theory, I hope. So let me do that real quick. Okay, I got a little bit of paint on it. And look at this. Look how it's that side. That's more than enough. I can't even get it in camera. That's, let's just say that that is more than enough angle looking really good so now i'll just go ahead like i did on the other side i'll just assemble everything together and torque it down and we should be golden oh i do have to reattach that i do have to reattach this to this so there's that that we gotta do so let me get that done and we'll wrap this thing up I just wanted to show you, this is the bracket that I modified right here. And to its immediate left is this bracket. Now the sway bar comes pretty damn close to hitting it, but what I did was I sprayed it down with WD-40 to get the um, cable to slide in the rubber bushing. And then I took the slack out of the cable where it was and put it where it needed to be. And then I also put, um, I adjusted a crescent wrench and I twisted it counterclockwise. Just, I don't know. If it was at 12, I probably turned it to like 10 or 11, just a little bit. And then I just grabbed it with my hands and I pulled it back um, to get it out of the way. So there's more clearance. And it's just insanely hard to show, but I just want you guys to know that it worked out real good. Okay, so now I have to just put the tire back. I got all the nuts and bolts tight. I even adjusted this for the factory six and a half inches. Um, and so we're, we're golden. I would say yeah, so we're golden. We just have to kind of reverse our steps here to get this truck on the ground. the feel of the vehicle because up to this point if you watch the other episodes like we've done all this work and not even taken it out and driven it um so yeah overall for me this was although i complained i complain a lot um i would say this is like a number one or a number two on complexity out of ten um 
yes, I had to drill and grind and die grind that stuff. But for me, it was super easy because I do a lot of manufacturing um, anyways. For somebody else, they might find it a little bit more difficult. If you were to have the bed off, I, I, I think it would go a lot easier. Um, I don't know why you would just take the bed off for this if you could just get it done the, like the way that I did it. Um, it was pretty easy. I'm looking forward to going and trying this truck out. Um, super excited. So, yeah. Thank you so very much for watching. I really appreciate you sticking around. And uh, like I say in almost every single video that I shoot, I really do have fun shooting these videos. Um, I try and help out as many people as I can. Like, if this helps you out, let me know in the comments below. Um, yeah, other than that, have a great day. Take care.